We would like to see the Rilla Boom and Cinema combo a lot of the time, but it's time to get into our first top four match here at EUIC. Raging Bolts mirrored all around, one for everybody, but Rilla Boom for Alex is going to be going up against the Incineroar on Tim's end. Give it up for our Masters top four matches, and no surprises here. There is a fake out of piece with Incineroar and Rilla Boom paired up with those Raging Bolts. Raging Bolt now in prime position to try and go for something like the Calm Minds. And this Raging Bolt over on Alex's end, it is going to be the special attack. So it does have a way to be dealing a little bit more damage off the get-go. So you can be going for the setup, you get the Calm Mind, so you can have that special defense boost, but you're not hard-pressed to, okay, well, if I need mm. to have that attack right now, that you have to go for it. And that's going to be one of the differences to look out here for the Raging Bolt. Fake Out's over on each end as well. Alex does have the upper hand in the fact that Rilla Boom's Fake Out will be faster than the Incineroar. That does give Alex a lot of momentum, like you said, has the respite, doesn't have to worry about necessary going for the Calm Mind. But we're going to see some sparkling terrestrialization fresh out of the blocks here in top four. It is going to be that Raging Bolt dropping its Dragon and Electric typing in favor of that Fairy typing. Don't want to be on the wrong side of a Dragon Pulse coming out from the opposing Raging Bolt. And Fake Out means no setup for Tim's Raging Bolt, but it's just going to be the Fake Out traded onto the Raging Bolt. So you get the terrestrialization out, and that's going to be the one thing. I think you would have terrestrialized that off the bat, like down the line anyways, but now Alex has that confirmation. Yes, and you're locked into it. It's not like you can undo this particular move. A little bit of recovery for the fake out, so it's almost like we're kind of resetting turn zero, but now there's no fake out potential on the field. Incineroar and Rillaboom in a position where they can maybe try and utilize this to start pivoting out, being able to bring that fake out for a little bit later. Wouldn't be surprised to see something like the parting shot come out from the Incineroar to negate the photosynthesis boost that the opposing Raging Bolt got. It's turn two, and my oh my, what a surprise. <laughs> Fairy type terrestrialization coming out for the Raging Bolt on Alex's end as well. This is so safe because you know that each one of them has the dragon coverage move. And if you're going for something like a calm mind, it can't be Thunderclap. You turn into the Incineroar, a critical hit. Doesn't necessarily feel like it. We'll see if that damage matters down the line. But a chance now for Alex to pivot. Yes, the faster Pokemon in the form of Rillaboom leaving the field first, and Alex now able to bring in a Pokemon from the back to apply a little bit more pressure to this opposing Raging Bolt. It is going to be the Incineroar, so throwing the Intimidate down, but critically, Fake Out back on the field to stop it for going for these Calm Minds, or even if it utilizes one this turn, it then can't use that extra boost for damage. And that could be where you can find yourself a step ahead. On this turn, it will be Calm Mind coming out from Alex Gomez to get another special attack boost and a special special attack and a special defense boost over on his Pokemon, matched by the one on Tim's end. Notably as well, to start things off, it was Alex's that did move first, but it will be a pivot from Tim as well. Parting shot will bring that now to just that plus one. Exactly, really trying to negate some of the pressure that the opposing Raging Bolt is having, as well as pivoting these Pokemon in and off the field. The thing is, however, if you are dropping down those special attacks. There's not a lot you can do to the special defense, which I think is wise, considering the fact that Tim has a lot of physical attackers. He's not going to worry about that too much. And now with the, the Rillaboom coming back in, it is yet again a tale of the fake outs, but now the faster one over on Tim's end of the board. And you can see here that you there's two different paths. You might want to stop the Incineroar so that your Raging Bolt can be setting up and you don't have to worry about the fake out. But if you do, well, then Alex can just go for the Calm Mind over on his own. And it's going to be a really dangerous game if you can let one Raging Bolt set up more than the other, because that is what's going to cost you in the end. Ultimately, that Protosynthesis boost could be what gives Alec this advantage because we see with these balance teams time and time again this very slow and steady consistency, almost where the trainers are hesitant to be the first one to break and deal that damage. Fake out, yes, it causes flinching, but it's not going to be able to get a lot of damage on the ball, particularly with that grassy terrain. The Raging Bolt on Tim's side, though, is being allowed to go for another Calm Mind here. Second one stacked up for Tim. No fake out on the opposing end. Could be a parting shot instead to start dealing it down. So negate it. All right, your special defense, you will get that raise there, but you're brought back down to just plus one special attack. If you do not like those long haul pivoty setup sort of games, I got bad news for you because we're <laughs> going to be in for a long one. Yeah, strap in Pokemon trainers. It's going to be a while, but this really does show the calculated methodical plays of our trainer. It's all moves and counter moves. They don't want to be the first one to drop and then leave themselves vulnerable. The thing with the parting shot as well, as opposed to trying to match a fake out that you could have been out sped over is Alex, is now you have the fake out pressure again on this turn, on a turn that Tim can't necessarily be matching that. So you can just fake out into the Raging Bolt and a turn for years to try and get, you know, one step ahead. You were set one turn behind them last, but you still are at a plus one special attack over Tim's Raging Bolt because of that protosynthesis booster energy to be kicking things off. But you have to be so careful with the pivots and fake out onto the Rillaboom to make sure no U-turn out and no manual swap either. 
Yes, we're going to see, once again, surprise, surprise, another Carmine coming through on Alex's side. And the thing is, if I'm either of these trainers, I'm going to have to start thinking about how I'm going to take down the opposing Raging Bolt, because it's not like your own Raging Bolt can attack it. It's got Dragon Pulse, that's not going to be affected by the Fairy types, and unless you're going to see lots of Thunderclaps going around, then there really isn't a way to deal damage to it. So you're always going to be relying on that partner Pokemon. At the same time, the opposing Raging Bolt really threatens that for the same reason. It's almost forced to attack that partner slot. Thank you, Tim, so much for opening up and looking at the menu. So you'll be keeping track of where we are about with the Calm Mind. Fake out from Alex into the Rillaboom instead. While you're also trying to set up your Raging Bolt, you do need to make sure that you're not necessarily taking too much damage. And since we did drop that Dragon type, the Wood Hammers from the opposing end would be hitting just for a neutral point at that. So now we got a fake a Calm Mind for Tim's Raging Bolt and being able to start stacking up. I wonder, um, are we just going all the way? Are we Are we not breaking <laughs> until we get to that plus six, plus six? I think it's really gonna come down to this face-off of who's gonna be able to bring out the Incineroar and get that fake up down again. Both trainers really thinking through these turns. Rillaboom on Tim's side is able to go for that U-turn, does do a significant chunk of damage. I think it's the most momentum that we've seen so far in this turn. And this could be where things start to get a little bit dicey. The Ogre Pond's also in the back, but Tim still hesitant to bring it in, doesn't wanna reveal that information, and is quite complacent here, bringing in the Incineroar, knowing the Intimidates help out against the Rillaboom, and at the same time, keeping that fake out pressure on the field. I'm not going to get too excited about the damage until we all of a sudden get rid of the grassy train and get rid of ways <laughs> to be setting it up. Maybe once we break, that could be the difference maker there, but you turn the Rillaboom's not going to be falling next turn and instead pivoting out to, who would have guessed it? It's going to be Incineroar again. <laughs> all these little bits of damage will eventually add up, though. And, you know, even at the end of the day, if we don't, there is a timer on the board, and we might see that come into effect for this particular match. Incineroar goes down, however. Wake up, world. We've got a KO on the board. The Dragon Pulse able to connect as the Raging Bolt does the same on Tim's side. Goes into the opposing Incineroar, but this time not enough to get the KO. You needed that extra damage previously to guarantee the knockout. Alex with the first one to be breaking the stalemate in this position, and he's going to be the one coming out ahead as he will be able to deal with the Incineroar and Tim, unfortunately, unable to be matching it. That is a lot of damage dealt down, but it was a pick. It was a KO that you need to be looking for. You can bring out the Rillaboom now. You do have to fake out once again, but that is definitely a blow considering that Alex can just go back to the pivoting game, and you all of a sudden lost a big piece to that. Exactly, your flexibility on how you pivot your Pokemon in and out is now dwindled down. Rillaboom has this utility to go for another fake out, maybe try and go down into that Raging Bolt so it cannot attack it with a another one of those Dragon Pulses. But at the same time, if you don't go for fake out into the opposing Incineroar, you're enabling it to be able to go for a parting shot and switch out and just keep the steamrolling, revolving door of Pokemon on Alex's side. When you're looking at Tim, though, that is something that you can try and make those reads for. So you want to make sure that, hey, if I'm protect, I'm predicting we'll see the Rillaboom come back in, can target into the slot. And if you feel that you have enough special attack on your side, then you can also try and target in. If the Incineroar will be swapping out, we see that it was a fake out targeted into the Raging Bolt, and it will be a Shifu instead that will be coming in over on Alex's end. Rillaboom targets down into that opposing Raging Bolt, not wanting it to go for any of those Dragon Pulses. Even though it has the Assault Vest, it has a little bit of respite, but the Raging Bolt on Tim's side on the full-out offensive, that's a one-hit KO into the opposing Urshifu. All right, Tim, it might have been a turn late, but being able to deal a little bit of revenge onto Alex and Raging Bolt will settle the score even if just a little bit. And now you have to, you still have your pivoting pieces for Alex, and in Cinemore you can bring it back in, get Intimidate onto the Grillet Boom, and have your own fake out. It could have been just something you wanted to attack at this point, but still, you have to be so careful going on forward because... These pieces, like the chess pieces right now, you cannot give them up if you're not getting a great advantage. Tim's Rillaboom is very exposed now as well. Incineroar's just joined the field. It can go for a fake-up. Rillaboom cannot protect, and it leaves it in prime target for a Dragon Pulse coming through from the opposing Raging Bolt. At the same time, if Tim wants to swap, his Pokemon in the back is that Ogre Pond Half Flame, and that's something that he needs as a critical piece to get the damage down on the board. So he doesn't want it to take any unnecessary damage. I think at this point, your Rillaboom is in a difficult spot. It's going to have to take this damage. It has the Assault Vest, so it might be able to have some flexibility around it. That said, if Alex wants to maybe go full on the offensive, maybe try and double up into it, it could be a way to get the knockout. And at this point, fake out into the Raging Bolt. Understandable. Fair. You turn into the Incineroar. That will be a pivot out now from Tim. And this will force the final Pokemon in over on his end. We know what it is. It's a Heart Flame Ogre Pond. But first chance for Alex to adjust. 
And this is good information for him as well. Being able to force Tim's hand to expose what those cards are in his back pocket shows that he is in control of this match. The Ogre Pond is down and out as well. This Raging Bolt is on a rampage. All right, you don't have to react. You can just go on and attack. One hit <laughs> KO, and it is down. And with that, Tim Edwards down to his final two Pokemon. Raging Bolt almost back up to full, will be a back up to full <laughs> after the grassy terrain and the leftovers recovery. But pieces surrounding getting slowly but surely whittled around. The thing with the Raging Bolt, however, is if we do get down into this kind of awkward stalemate between the two Pokemon, as I said earlier, they don't really have a way to hit each other except for the Thunderclaps, that priority move. And that can lead to a very interesting endgame where the trainers are just trying to play these mind games and try and get this longevity on the field. Rillaboom has the chance to now go for one final fake out on Tim's side in this game one. Very likely going to go down into this opposing Raging Bolt just to stop it from being able to get damage on the board and then enabling the Raging Bolt on Tim's side to go for the... Dragon Pulse into that Incineroar, get the KO. And even if you want to switch something in like the Rillaboom, that's still going to have to take that damage. Especially since the Rillaboom did take a significant chunk. Since it does have the Assault Vest, you'd have to see exactly how much it would be dealt in on the switch in. But at the same time, then it would also bring Alex down to two pieces. You would have a fake out on the next time around, but that is still tough. And when your Incineroar is also really low, I don't know if you can risk it. Fake out, critical hit, a little bit more damage into that Raging Bolt and the flinch on this turn. His Dragon Pulse into the Incineroar, already low, will now settle the score to a piece. Very easy knockout there. And once again, these trainers bringing the Raging Bolt and now the Rillabooms onto the field to close out this endgame. Rillaboom just gaining a little bit more recovery from that grassy terrain, as is the Raging Bolt. And depending on how many more turns of this grassy terrain is in play, it's not going to be around for long. Both Rillabooms on the field, they have no utility to come back in and reset that. So eventually the damage is going to start stacking up. And the thing too, once that grassy terrain is gone, it will only be the Raging Bolt over on Tim's end that will get that consistent recovery, since it is the booster energy over on Alex's end. And now you do have a little bit more of a health advantage on Tim's end, since both your Pokemon are full at this moment. And if we are looking at those micro little differences that you're gonna be chipping away, every part of that matters. If you are worried though, I mean, Alex did have that little bit of advantage advantage with the fact you did get that extra special attack boost because of the booster energy and that damage will matter as well. Fake out first will be the first move into the Raging Bolt. Rillaboom moving first here though, able to go for that Wood Hammer. That's big damage onto the opposing Raging Bolt. It's going to have to take a little bit of recoil though and that could be detrimental as the Dragon Pulse connects down. Not enough to get the knockout though. The Assault Vest so critical in this moment, not being able to bring Tim down to just his final Pokemon. And a lot of damage dealt into that Raging Bolt. A round of recovery for the house here, a second one for the Raging Bolt over on Tim's end. But surely that damage is going to be crucial. Alex does have an opportunity to try and match that, though. Alex also can now go for something like the Thunderclap into that opposing Rillaboom, try and get the knockout before Rillaboom's able to go for that priority. But the Grassy Terrain is still in effect. Yes, and that's where we can see something like the Grassy Glide be coming out. Since if you try and Thunderclap into something that already has that priority move, that could be difficult. You did bring the Raging Bolt down low. You do deal a little bit of extra damage with the help of that Grassy Terrain boosting that Grass-type move. And if you're scared for the Thunderclap, well, then you just got to go for that one either way. <laughs> yeah, you don't really have a choice at this point. Rillaboom going in for that Grassy Glide. Not enough to be able to get the knockout as the Thunderclap does come through from one Raging Bolt into the other. They're really starting to line up their sights against each other as the Wood Hammer follows up. But again, not enough to KO. Really hoping with that double up with the Thunderclap into the Raging Bolt first that it was going to be doing the damage that you can just two hit KO, get rid of it right on the spot. But Dragon Pulse, after that survival, will take down the Rillaboom on Alex's end of the field, leaving just his lone Raging Bolt with just a sliver of health against the world. And the grassy terrain still in effect here for the moment, making it very easy for this Rillaboom to be able to go through and connect. This makes things very, very dicey for the... Oh, it doesn't. It's gone. It's gone. That gives things a little bit more difficulty here for Tim. Looking at this though, Alex, it is a 2v1 and we have still the priority on the Raging Bolt. Yes, we do have multiple special defense boosts, but if Alex tries to target into the Raging Bolt, the Rillaboom to take care of it and vice versa. You're kind of checkmate in this situation. These Pokemon won't be taking care of themselves, so it's it's a tough one. Even if you do just try to play that Thunderclap mind game, I mean the Woodhammer in the end, you've already just taken so much damage and the fact that you weren't being able to heal it up like Tim was able to on his end, it's... It's a tough one. Really, really well played by both of these trainers, though. And the fact that we got to see so much setup, so much deliberation going on forward in this, 
I mean, like I said, we're in for the long haul. <laughs> I think the 2v1 situation, though, does give Tim a lot of momentum here. You see the Protect come through on Alex's Raging Bolt. That Raging Bolt is, you know, just trying to maybe see a little bit what Tim is doing, maybe try and scout out what exactly Rillaboom wants to do, as well as burning through one of those Thunderclap moves on the opposing side. I mean, Alex also has to start thinking towards the rest of the set. The issue here is you're enabling the Raging Bolt on Tim's side to get a little bit more recovery as well, making it even harder for a Thunderclap on the opposing Raging Bolt from Alex to get that knockout. I think it's more so thinking about how you're going to be dealing with this in the game too. Yeah. I don't see an out here at this moment, especially with the health regeneration. It could be cute to scout out, but regardless, unless there is something crazy going on from Tim, it is just a safe double up into this going on since you do not have that left over recovery over on Alex's end here. And when you're looking at what can be done in this game two situation, it is difficult because it was both trainers breaking first and it was Alex to get the upper hand with the KO, but that damage that Tim was able to do earlier on into things like the Rillaboom really just kind of paved that way down the line. Both these trainers were kind of evenly matched at the beginning of this set, really kind of looking to their Raging Bolts to get those Calm Eyes set up, and both being so methodical and calculated with the way that they were switching in their Incineroar and their Rillaboom. So you can see Alex trying to go for the double protect here, but to no avail. The one thing it does stop is that Thunderclap, but there's no stopping the Rillaboom in its tracks. It's able to go for this Wood Hammer and get the knockout, forcing the Game 2 situation here. So congratulations to Tim winning Game 1, and it really did come down to the fact that Tim went on that offensive very, very quickly. Both did, but a difference in the Pokemon that were being brought out and how they were pivoting. And it's so difficult to look back and be like, oh, okay, well, this turn, because I think that there was a lot of different factors that went into it. Again, I think one of the biggest one is just the amount of damage that Tim was able to output, whereas Alex wasn't able to have that full recovery going on. And Alex has to be looking to that. There was a lot of recovery into the Raging Bolt, but it wasn't quite matched. And when it is just those micro differences going on forward and more and more into this match, it's those ones you have to be looking at into. I want to just slow this down a little bit more because the beginning of the match was very slow. Then it got very, very quick and it kind of was hard to keep track of a few different things. But I think the one thing that really stood out to me, as you mentioned, was the, the last Pokemon that was there. The Urshifu on Alex's side was so underwhelming. I think it really missed having a focus that should be able to take that Dragon Pulse there. And I think going into this next game, Game, Alex needs to either find a way to bring it in a little bit safer so that it's able to actually get some damage on the board, maybe apply some physical threat to the opposing Raging Bolt, or has to change up that slot because it really did kind of almost put him in a situation where he ended up only bringing three Pokemon. I can't imagine, though, with the swap into the Urshifu that Alex ever thought it was a safe swap. I feel at that point it's preserving different key pieces that you have in the Incineroar and that Rillaboom to still be able to have that pivot and the fake-out potential because that fake-out is what was keeping the Raging Bolt in check over on the opposing end. And the same when you're looking at Tim because Tim also had that swap into the Heart Flame Ogre Pond that just, well, it just got cleanly cleared off of the board there. But it was then a pivot that allowed something else to be coming in safer. It does feel bad when that's how the Pokemon falls in this battle. So if you can find any other utility from it, it would definitely feel really, really nice. But I do think that the Rillaboom Incineroar Raging Bolt is that three that need to be showing up. Yeah, my eyes are kind of looking at the Golden Go here, wondering if there is any utility to bring it in, try and go for those nasty plots, gain some momentum, and set up with that Pokemon as opposed to the Raging Bolt. You can then apply pressure with the Make It Rain if the opposing Raging Bolt does want to go for that Terra Fairy. The issue is those Calm Minds boosting up the special defense as well, and you can go for parting shots all you like. That special defense is still going to be in play and detrimental to the pressure that Golden Go wants to inflict. Golden Go would definitely be pressured in the matchup, but it would pressure the Raging Bolt in return since you do have access to something that, hey, if it all of a sudden goes into that Terra Fairy, you have these powerful Make It Rains. If it doesn't, well, then the Raging Bolt on Alex's not side is just going to go absolutely nuts with those Dragon Pulses. So it definitely is a risky adjustment going on forward, but it is definitely a possible one. It's whether you want to be taking that risk here in top four, game two, when you're it's one match away from potentially ending the run. It's going to be Rillaboom, Raging Bolt yet again, Raging Bolt, and it's in a row for Tim. I've seen these leads before, Sierra, bringing in the consistency from these trainers, knowing that their leads in the first game were strong. They give that amazing supportive options to the Raging Bolt and then do allow it to try and get those Calm Minds set up once the fake outs have, of course, been burnt. Of course, yet again, booster energy reminder, special attack boost for Alex. So when you're looking at the damage trading down the line, a little bit of advantage over on his end. And this is how we saw a turn one of game one turn out with double fake out on each side, a way to be stopping the Raging Bolt on the opposing. 
I really wouldn't be surprised to see the same slow and steady approach from these trainers, just trying to wait for the other to make a mistake and capitalize on it. It could be that one turn where they maybe don't go for the fake out, call the ultimate bluff, and then go for some big damage just to get it in early doors. But I think critically, the setup of these Raging Bolts is so crucial to being able to have more longevity on the field and to be able to have the end game closers. If you can get a heads up move on this pivoting and make a big call, that could be paying off in spades. But it's also what could be putting you that one turn to find and really easily then lose out in this Raging Bolt mirror because you cannot disrespect it. So not surprised. <laughs> Again, we're going to see the beloved, the cherished little heart on top, Raging Bolt coming out. You've got to, right? When you're facing down a potent against a potential Dragon Pulse, it just makes so much utility. But there is no Terrestrialization on Tim's side. Doesn't have to worry about it, though. You're not going for the Terrestrialization um, so on your side, and you're going for the Fake Out into the other one, so you don't have to worry about the Dragon Pulse. A very, very neutral turn. But critically, very similar to how it was in Game 1, Alex is now kind of already committed to the Terror, whereas Tim does still have options. It was funny, in game one, it was actually yeah, swapped the first, order right? around, <laughs> but now Alex went ahead and committing that on the first turn. We're going to see the second turn submit because... It, you, Why not, right? <laughs> well, you can't, you can't not. You will lose if you're not terrestrializing this Raging <laughs> Bolt and allowing it to potentially be taken down by the opposing end. Yeah, we're not breaking tradition here. We're trying to shake up the meta too much. Let's just go for the Terra Fairy on this adorable Raging Bolt. That said, once it starts getting those Calm Minds up, it's going to be a little less cute to face down on the battlefield. I think one key thing for these trainers is to just stay calm and composed. Go for those parting shots, go for those U-turns, and just keep trying to get your Pokemon in a position where they can start to go for those Dragon Pulses. You need to make sure that at a point, though, where it's going to be doing enough damage. The Assault Vest on these Ritter Booms are very real, and they can stop you from getting the knockouts. I'm curious if we're going to see as much setup from these two trainers as we ought to see in that game one, or if someone's going to break a little sooner and try to do the damage they need. Rillaboom already going for that damage into the Raging Bolt. It'll be bringing it to about half, but that'll be damage that stacks up. First Calm Mind coming out, Alex's end of the board, plus one to the special attack and the special defense, but it will be matched in tune from the one over on Tim's end. We very consistently at this point, I believe, seen Alex's always move first. Mm -hmm. So even though it is this booster special attack and not speed, I do think this one might be trained to be just a little bit faster in this. Parting shot, it will bring down to just that plus one special attack now at this point. Yeah, this is the thing. It's kind of got the best of both worlds. The booster energy giving it that special attack, but it's not really speedy anyway. So it doesn't have to have that investment in this particular matchup. Very useful coming into this top four game. Tim now has the position, though, to bring in a Pokemon from the back. And you can see he's brought the exact same four Pokemon as he did to game one. It was the victorious set for him, but also it does enable him to keep this pivoting, keep this rotation and constantly apply pressure to stop Alex's Raging Bolt from doing what it wants to do at the same time. He could go in the same way that Alex did, go for that wood hammer and try and get damage on the board. You have to be so careful because there is the way of getting the damage down on the board, but also you're not going to be dealing enough. And if you get the calm mind, you can start falling behind, especially since you do have the extra element of layer added to this. The Rillaboom over on Alex's end will can go for another wood hammer as well. It wouldn't be enough for the KO, but it's still going to be a significant amount of damage in a game that you're supposed to be outlasting and outliving. I think if you're able to deal with the opposing Raging Bolt early, however, it does give your Raging Bolt a little bit more free reign to start commanding this match. If you're not having to worry about your opponent targeting down that partner slot, going for those Dragon Pulses into your Urshifu or your Incineroar, it will give Alex a little bit more breathing room. The one thing with Tim maybe disrespecting the Rillaboom on the opposing end a little bit is the fact that you will be recovering a lot more health. So you still, if you know you're making it through this turn, you can do that survive here. You turn for a good chunk of damage into that Rillaboom and notably as well bringing in the Incineroar. So if there is another Woodhammer coming out from the Rillaboom on Alex's end, well, it's now been intimidated twice and will be doing a lot less damage. That's the thing, Incineroar isn't just here for the fake outs, it has that ability too to play a role. Rillaboom, I think, maybe seeing the writing on the wall there and going for the U-turn to make sure that those Intimidates can be reset. The Wood Hammer could be a critical piece to be able to get the damage on the board or even just to be able to have that priority Grassy Glide to play around any Thunderclap shenanigans. I don't think we'll see the Thunderclaps coming quite out yet. They're only, they're only at a plus one special attack. Just it's, the one, okay, okay. It's not enough for these Raging <laughs> Bolts. We want to make sure we can go. I will be curious if one breaks a little bit sooner to try and make sure that you can be getting the damage needed. But for now, Alex bringing in his own Incineroar, 
Another round of Intimidate. Another round of Calm Mind while we're at it, too. Keep it coming. Keep that record and repeat. We're going to be saying it all set long. Fake outs, Calm Minds, a little bit of Intimidate. And oh, look at that Calm Mind on Tim's side as well. But even though it might be that little bit repetitive, the consistency is key to trying to lock up the end game for these trainers. They're both similar teams. They've got similar strategies. So it really will come down to the little intricate ways that they've been trained and who breaks first on the offensive pressure. A critical hit could be devastating in this match. Yeah, it, all of the setup, and for what, if the critical hit comes yeah. on through? Tim, at this point, this Raging Bolt has almost gained back all of its health. Uh, it's about 40, 30 HP, 40 HP away from recovering it. So that's been really, really clutch going on for it. And you can go for another Calm Mine here at this point, since you're still not being pressured offensively at this point. So I think we're just going to see the same old, same old. Alex could start switching it up, though. You've got the plus two on there. So you have the potential to be able to just start applying a lot of pressure to the opposing Incineroar. That was one thing that Alex was able to do earlier on in the game one, was put Tim a Pokemon down before he lost his. And that then did force Tim to have to bring in Pokemon like the Ogre Pond from the back and expose them. Alex just wasn't able to get the momentum through to the end, but it was still a good strategy. Well, right now, neither Raging Bolt going on the offensive as Incineroar is doing all the work. A Faco traded a piece. You can do it. I can do it as well. We've got to keep an eye on this grassy terrain as well because both Rillabooms are in the back and their critical role as well as all the pivoting is actually to keep that grassy terrain on the field. Yes, it does also benefit your opponents, but it's critical for your strategy too, as well as enabling the grassy glide. If your Incineroar or your Raging Bolt is able to combine and deal with the opposing Rillaboom, then yours has that advantage. It can be the only one to benefit from the priority given by the grassy terrain. Lou, you know what I think we might see this time around? I think we're just going to see a round of Calm Minds and a parting shot. Are you sure? I think we really? might. I okay. think we might. It, it's it's too safe to go for otherwise. But you could go for something like this Will-O-Wisp, considering we talked about the, how important that grassy train is for that recovery. But since there is only that one way of recovery over on Alex's end, this is actually a way that you can start getting the leg up in the battle because that is going to be negated and the damage is going to be starting to stick. And the Calm Mind from Alex, sure, that special defense, that special attack, it is going up. Those socks are going up. But if you're going to be burned, that could be so detrimental. It does have to connect, though. That's always the first part with those Will-O-Wisps. And first of all, we've got to get through these Calm Minds, both of them at three apiece on that special attack and special defense here as the Incineral goes for the parting shot. So we'll be dropping the Raging Bolt on Tim's side back down to plus two special attack. And that'll be an Incineral now swapping out. I could only imagine the Rillaboom coming back in over on Alex's end. So you have the fake out yet again going on to the next turret or to try and even pressure if you think that you might be falling behind in that damage trade. Since Alex is at that plus three special attack, this is where in that first game that Alex started really going and where we started seeing the Dragon Pulses be fired off. So that would be the time, especially if this Will-O-Wisp does connect because it does put a timer on Alex's field. That's the thing. You might kind of think, oh, the Will-O-Wisp going down into a special attacker. That's not necessarily the strategic play we've seen previously, but it's all just about those damage counts. You can always go for the parting shot later, try and just, you know, drop the opposing Raging Bolt down to that plus two and make it a little less formidable. But in the end game, all those little bits of damage can count. In game one, we saw, for example, the fake out got a critical hit into that opposing Raging Bolt. And sometimes just those minute little points of HP can be what sways the win in the end and it's going to be a long one so you've got to hold on and see how the show's going to close out eyebrow raise coming out from alex the burn of course that's not going to affect the special attack at all so the raging bolt's still going to be a force to be reckoned with in that case but now there is that little bit of a timer you have to have that grassy train up so you're not falling behind in the damage whereas tim is only going to be healing I'm not going to lie, the anticipation is building for me at the moment because this is what happened in game one. Really, really slow, consistent plays, very similar plays. And then one thing changed and it completely threw me off guard. Now the grassy terrain has left the field. This is where Tim could bring his really boom in, set that terrain back up again, have a little bit of the fake out in play. But we're starting to see a divide in strategies. That will o -Wisp has come through. Incineral could go for a will o -Wisp into the opposing really boom Just burn it and stop these wood hammers and grassy glides from being something that the Raging Bolt doesn't want to take. They would only then really punish the Rillaboom then, unless there is the swap out. And if there is the swap out, then you would be doing not much into an Incineroar. It will be sticking around this time. Fake out into the Raging Bolt, Dragon Balls into the Incineroar. Alex said, hey, I might be burned, and Incineroar, you're going down for that. Here we go again. Dragon Pulse comes out from Alex. He takes the first knockout of the match, and it is Incineroar that has been felled again. Tim going to be forced to bring in a Pokemon from the back. It's probably going to be that Rillaboom just to get back into that momentum of switches, but we know that Ogre Pond is waiting in the wings. 
There is the opportunity to bring in the Rillaboom to make sure that you're not damaged too th much by the Dragon Falls. It could have been a safe swap into that Ogre Pond as well if you wanted to be doing the damage and not give that Grassy Terrain over to your opponent as well. At this point, we will see it will be the Rillaboom. Grassy Surge, Grassy Terrain, and you could fire off a powerful Wood Hammer as well. Fake out pressure over onto this next turn. Yes, Rillaboom most likely going to go for the Fake Out into that opposing Raging Bolt, just going to stop it from going for a Dragon Pulse. But then again, you have the Assault Fest. This could be an opportunity you could take to just go for the Wood Hammer. Knowing that you can take one of these Dragon Pulses, it's an opportunity to get damage on the board, boosted up by that grassy terrain. You have to watch out for maybe an Incineral switching in for the Rillaboom on Alistic side, because that Intimidate will be detrimental to the pressure you can apply. Thing is, is that there is two threats, but when you're looking at an end game with these Raging Bolts and you have that recovery, you're gonna be coming out ahead and you wanna keep it in check. Fake out, definitely the safer turn in this. You turn a nice chunk of damage into the Rillaboom and now yet again a pivot. I didn't know if I'd be saying that this many times today. <laughs> now the Rillaboom is gone. You can bring something like Incineroar back in. Yet again, here we go. Of course, we still have yet to see an action from this Raging Bolt. So we'll have the opportunity to go on the offensive and start chipping away at the Incineroar. It's going to start sounding like a made-up word, the word pivot by the end of this. But Raging Bolt on Tim's side, also going to go for that Dragon Pulse. But it is not able to get the KO. It's only at plus two here. So that underwhelming damage means Incineroar is here to stay. The fake-out pressure is still there for Alex. That is a lot of damage that's been stacking up, though. And when you're looking at it, Tim did, um, quote unquote, fall behind in the game one with not getting the same big KOs that Alex was getting to be kicking things off, but still finding ways to be dealing back into that, especially, too, with the Incineroar already being so low. Sure, you can go for the fake out, but there are still two very powerful Pokemon over on this end that can be dealing with. And since the, there is the Assault Vest for the Rillaboom, a Dragon Pulse would, shouldn't KO that. I do believe in that game one that the U-turn and the Dragon Pulse wasn't enough into the Roller Boom. I can't quite remember if Grassy Terrain played a role in it, but the Incineroar's in a prime position where, again, it could go for the Fake Out, try and maybe give that chip over the edge to guarantee the knockout, and that would force Tim to reveal that final Pokemon in the back. Fake Out, Raging Bolt, little bit of damage, no attack this time around. Wood Hammer coming out from Tim to start doing more and more damage into this Raging Bolt that does not have the capability of healing back up. Dragon Pulse will take care of that KO, thanks to in part the recoil as well that it was taking, bringing now Tim to his final two. Yeah, really been on Tim's side. Needed to get a little bit more gas back in the tank from that grassy terrain. Now down two Pokemon, whereas Alex still has all four ready to rotate through and apply pressure. It really has been where he was able to keep that Raging Bolt with those Calm Mind boosts up. Less parting shots were going down into it. And although the Will-O-Wisp, as you can see, is chipping away, the fact that it can deal that extra punch behind the Dragon Pulse is meaning that Alex is gaining the momentum in this match. When we're looking at the final two Pokemon for Tim, though, they are at full health, and the Ogre Pond, getting in safely this time around, does have speed on its side and still can be dealing a lot of pressure over onto the opposing end. So sure, there is a heavy Pokemon advantage on Alex's end, but there is a significant difference in how these Pokemon are looking. The Incineroar is so low, the Raging Bolt so low, you do have the potential of firing off a fast attack into that one slot. Yes, both these Pokemon have the utility. Raging Bolt can also go for something like the Thunderclap just to get that priority down on the board. But Ogre Pond really is going to be the key to victory here for Tim if he wants to be able to not go into a game three. And looking at the fact that the Raging Bolt from Alex could be firing off a Thunderclap onto Tim's end into that Hearth Flame Ogre Pond, you then have to worry about the potential. Well, if it's a spiky shield, you fall so far behind on that. It will be the protect scout things out a little bit and try and see where your Incineroar can make up a little bit more of that lack. But Woodhammer into that slot, already so low, not very effective. It didn't need to be. Slowly chipping away at the Pokemon count on Alex. Yeah, Ogapon not feeling tempted to go down into that Raging Bolt, going for the target slot, and Raging Bolt here just going for the Dragon Pulse, but to no avail. I do like the play by Alex here, going for the Protect, like you said, kind of just trying to identify how Tim wants to play this out, but Tim identifying the Protect was safe, and he was going to punish Alex for it. And now, with that Protect, you didn't get to have that big Dragon Pulse yeah. onto that Ogre Pond, because that could have been a call, too, since the Wood Hammer was targeted into the Incineroar, and the Dragon Pulse would have done no damage to you since you are Terra and you are immune. This would have been the opportunity to put Tim down to his final Pokemon. Raging Bolt can clutch out some crazy end games, so I'm not going to discount it, but it definitely would have been a swing to maybe put things way better for Alex here. And when Pokemon are being chipped away, it definitely makes things difficult. We still get to see the fourth Pokemon on Alex's end, and we will finally get to see it. The Urshifu that didn't get to do much in this first game 
Hopefully you make a splash in the second. Yeah, it has an opportunity for redemption here. And I think if you've got Alex, you have to be aware that Tim is really playing the player and not just the game here, calling exactly how Alex wants to play out these turns and then capitalizing on those reads. As long, of course, as he gets it correctly. This is where things can get a little bit difficult now. The Urshifu's on the field. It is not carrying a focus sash. So this could be a prime opportunity to go for something like the Thunderclap, but you don't want to misplay at this point. Tim cannot afford to do so. It does have to protect, unlike the choice on items. So if you hit a Thunderclap into that, it could not do much. As well, the Aqua Jet having that other priority. And the double up into the Ogre Pond is actually not going to be enough with that. Ogre Pond now, the Wood Hammer, it will be the Recoil, but it doesn't matter. It will be enough to take care of Alex's Raging Bolt. Tim punches the air, and you can see why. He needed that survival on the Ogre Pond so it could get that retaliation and now leave the Raging Bolt to try and clean up against this opposing Urshifu. Ogre Pond will go down to its troubles. It has been valiant in this match, but now Raging Bolt has all of Tim's chances to try and get into to these finals. There's one more Pokemon he's got to get through, though. That Rillaboom is still in the back. You saw the hands come together for Alex, praying that the Urshifu can make it through the turn, but the Raging Bolt, no problem for it. Now, just that Rillaboom remaining does have the Assault Vest, but it's already down quite a bunch of health at this point. And we've gotten to see before that the Wood Hammer is just not enough, and with the recoil, it still wouldn't be enough to be quite getting it there. Raging Bolt, Protect here. Make sure that, hey, you can get a little bit more recovery. Yeah, so also burns through this fake out as well, not just taking any unnecessary damage, but Tim knows how to play this. The Rillaboom in a position where, yes, it can go for this wood hammer, but we've seen that it is nowhere near enough to be able to get that damage, particularly as the grassy terrain has left the field. Make sure that the wood hammers are not boosted by any additional factors, that these wood hammers, the damage is just going to be mitigated going on forward, and the dragon pulses you can get the most out of. Going on into this, there is also the potential of something like a critical kit happening. Grassy Glide instead to not take any recoil. You're going to do this a slow and steady way, but when the Dragon Pulse from the other end is doing significant amount of damage, won't be quite it. You have to hope that you can do enough fish for the crit with the Wood Hammer on the next turn. Three minutes left. We won't need that long. Rillaboom on just a sliver. Raging Bolt has been front and center in the set for both our trainers, but it is Tim's that is still standing at the end of this set. It's in prime position. Another one of these Dragon Pulses is going to come through. The Wood Hammer, not enough. Raging Bolt is here to clean it through. Tim Edwards is going into the finals. What a fantastically played set. And Tim Edwards, who has already broken through the roof of his past.